Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll replace our decimal display with an hexadecimal one using the Motorola MC14495 decoder. I hope you enjoy. So in the previous video, we've been working on this decimal display that counts from zero to 99 using a dual digit seven segment display and two 74LS47 decoders. Now, the goal for this series is to build a hexadecimal display. So we have to go one step further than that. And you can't purchase hexadecimal seven segment display decoders anymore. So if you want to build such a circuit, you have to purchase secondhand decoders. They used to be produced in the past. Um, and specifically, one decoder I want to look at is the Motorola MC14495. So it's a hexadecimal to seven segment latch decoder LED driver. And this chip is quite interesting because it will drive a single seven segment digit from four bits of data, including hexadecimal letters. It includes within the chip current limiting resistors. So you don't have to add them externally, which means your circuit can be greatly simplified. And it also includes a four bit latch, which can be useful if you want to build an output register for example for a homebrew cpu so this is a pretty cool little chip and i've got some that i purchased secondhand on ebay i thought it would be a good step forward to move from the 74 ls47 which is the decimal decoder to the mc14495 which is the hexadecimal decoder so let's get to it this chip is a CMOS chip and it can take an input voltage from 4.5 to 18 volts. And it says here that with a 5 volt power supply, it can be used without resistor interface to drive seven segment LEDs. So the series output resistors of typically 290 ohms are internal to the device. And we've computed in our last video, the resistance needed to drive our yellow display at 10 milliamps. And the brightness for that display was really nice. It is a bit washed out on the video, but that's because I'm using a pretty bright light in order to light my scene. But in normal use, this is reasonably bright. And so for that display specifically, we've computed that the resistance needed to be 280 ohms. And so it seems that the MC14495 is going to be able to drive this adequately. You can see in the data sheets, a typical circuit at five volts. It's really simple. You just plug in the display straight to the chip. One thing to note though, is that we need a common cathode LED display. And I've been using a common anode display in the past video, so we'll have to change that. And one thing that the chip includes is an indicator for when the number is greater than 10. So when the number is A through F, you can light an LED if you want to signify that this is hexadecimal. And there is an open drain output that is driven to ground when the input is at the maximum. So one, 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 one. I don't really see a use for that one. Same thing for the hexadecimal indicator. It doesn't really seem that we need those two pins. So we're going to ignore them. So let's go into KiCad and build this circuit. So let's start by switching out our display. We have to use a common cathode display. And the one I have in stock is pin compatible with the DC56 modules. So it's a bit bigger and it has a different pinout. We're also not gonna need our resistances anymore. And we can switch our controllers to the MC14495. KiCad doesn't have an existing symbol for this chip. So I'm going to create it. Okay, so this is our new symbol. Let's add it to the schematic. So as I said, we're not going to be using the hexadecimal indicator as well as the open drain maximum output. And on the display, we're not going to connect the dots. Now the common cathode needs to go to ground and the latch enable we can connect together. There we go. And the display I'm going to use is a HDSP 523Y, which is a yellow display from Broadcom. 
Okay, so let's go into the breadboard and implement this new display. Okay, so this is our breadboard where we left off the last time. As you can see, we are still counting in decimal. So I'm going to rebuild this top breadboard to include the MC14495 decoder. And I will also have to switch the display to this one, which is common cathode. It's a bit bigger, but otherwise should work similarly. So let's get started. So first, let me disconnect both breadboards. And I will be building this circuit on a new breadboard. Here is our display. So let's add our two decoders. So these are secondhand chips, so I do hope they work. This one seems to have a bit of a broken pin here, so I'm going to use another one. So they need power and ground. And decoupling capacitors. And then we just have to connect our display. So that's one of the advantages of using this chip. Since the current limiting resistors are built in, we can avoid doing all these connections. So let's connect our display. Okay, so these are all the anodes connected. Let's connect the cathodes to ground. Okay, so we have to connect the latch enable pins together. And I will connect a jumper to this pin. And for now, let's drive it low so that the latch is transparent. As you can see, the circuit is much simpler because you don't have the resistors, but otherwise it's pretty similar. So let's connect it to our counter. And right off the bat, without connecting the data inputs that are currently floating, we can see that this seems to be working. That's great. Let me turn off the power for now. There we go. This should be everything. Let's turn on the power. And at the moment, we are at zero. Let me bring back my clock. There we go. And we are counting again. Now, of course, this is still counting in decimal because we haven't updated our counting circuit. So let's do that now. Okay, so in order to go back to binary, we have to remove this circuit here of all the three input NAND gates and connect back the terminal count output of the first counter to the count enable of the second counter. So let's do that now. We can remove the power supply of this gate as well as its decoupling capacitor. The master reset, we can tie to VCC. And then the terminal count of the learnable counter, we have to connect back to the count enable of the second counter. And so this will now count in binary. So let's go into the breadboard and do this modification. So let me turn off the power and remove the three input NAND gate that we have here. Then we have to connect the reset signals back together and pull them high. And we have to connect the terminal count output of the lower enable counter to the count enable of the higher enable counter. And this should be it. Let's turn the power back on. There we go. Now we are counting to 16 on the lower enable. And if I speed up the clock, we should be counting to 16 on the high enable. Awesome. So as you can see, we're now able to display hexadecimal values on our display using these two decoders. And we can even try out the latch. So if I bring the latch enable high, the decoder should memorize the value that it is currently displaying. And as you can see, this works. So we are still counting, but we have latched DE. And if I bring it low again, it goes back to displaying the counter value. Okay. So this works really well. So in terms of brightness, the display is reasonably bright. I have a pretty strong backlight here, so the image is, is a bit washed out. Let me turn it off just to try it out. Okay, so you can see that the brightness is quite all right, I think, for this specific yellow display. 
So one thing that may be interesting to understand is at which current is the MC14495 driving the displays? Because this might help to see what luminance we can be expecting from this arrangement. And it's going to depend on the color, the current that is getting out of the decoder, and that's going to depend on the forward voltage of the LEDs in the display. So if you look at the data sheets for the decoder, you can see that they give here in the electrical characteristics, the output drive voltage. And with a five volts power supply, we get three values. When the outputs are sourcing zero milliamps, five milliamps, and 10 milliamps. And at ambient temperature, we get the voltage at the outputs which is 4.8, 3.0, and 1.7. And from this table, we can approximate the current that is being output for any voltage by using a simple linear regression. Okay, so I will enter the current and the X values, and then the voltage in the Y values. And then this is going to give us the linear equation between the voltage and the current. And so as you can see, the voltage is 4.7 minus the current multiplied by 0.3. So you can see the curve here. It's an approximation, it's not gonna be exact, but it's gonna allow us to estimate the current that is running through the LEDs. So let me write that in KiCad. So for the MC14495, we have the following equation, and this is giving us the voltage function of the current. And then we can do the same for the forward voltage of the LED. And because there's no other component in this circuit, the forward voltage is going to be directly equal to the voltage at the output of the decoder. So if I look at the data sheet of the display, for the yellow color, we can see that the forward voltage is 2.1 at 20 milliamps. And from this graph over here, we can see that at zero milliamps, it's approximately 1.6, I would say. So if we go back to the linear regression calculator and enter zero milliamps and 20 milliamp, it's 1.6 and 2.1. Uh, and I guess we need three values for this software. So let's get 10 milliamp. It's gonna be, let's say, let me zoom in a bit. 10 milliamp, let's say 1.95. And this is what we get. Again, it's an approximation. You can see it's not really a straight line here, but it should work for our purposes. And so we can copy that into KiCad. And we can say that for the display, the voltage is this equation. Let's call this V forward and then this is V on. Now we can say that V on equals to VF. That's because there are no other components in this circuit. And so this gives us the current. And so if we solve this system, we can compute that the current is equal to 10.8 milliamps with this specific display. If we take a look at the data sheet again, we can see here that the relative luminous intensity, that means normalized at 10 milliamps, is going to be approximately proportional to the forward current, at least in the range that we're interested in, which is, let's say, below 15 milliamps. You can say that it's almost a straight line. And so if we take the luminous intensity at 10 milliamps, that's 2.3 millicandela. we find that at this current of 10.8, the luminous intensity is 2.48 millicandela. And so this is the intensity that we're driving our display at. And as I've shown in the video, it's a pretty nice intensity. So when I design the final display module, I'll try to target something around 2 millicandela, 2.5 millicandela, and that should give us a good brightness and on some displays that are more efficient, it will allow us to reduce the current in order to get a display that is not too bright, which is what you often see with LED displays. Before we conclude this video, I should probably mention some drawbacks and things to keep in mind about this decoder. The first thing is that there's a maximum continuous output power, which is computed using this formula of 50 milliwatts. And if you do the calculation, this means that you cannot go higher than 15 milliamps per pin which should probably be fine given that the current limiting resistors are internal to the chip. So you can't really increase the current more than 
what it is already giving you, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. More importantly though, because the current limiting resistors are internal to the chip, it's not gonna be possible to tune the brightness of the display. The decoder doesn't have a blanking input that you could use for pulse width modulation if you wanted to scale down the brightness. So you're kind of limited to what the current limiting resistors that are built into the chip give you. And so if you go with a more efficient display than my yellow one, then you may find that the end result is really bright. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And then it's really a slow chip. If you look at the propagation delays uh, for turning on and off the display, they're in the orders of microseconds, which I guess it's fine because your eye is not gonna notice these transitions. But if you want to use the latch, they are here, the setup time, the hold time, and the minimum pulse width of the latch enabled signal. And those are pretty high at five volts. You can see here that the minimum width is 525 nanoseconds. And there's a setup time and a hold time that is counted in the hundreds of nanoseconds. And so it's probably not gonna be usable directly in, for example, a 6502 system, unless you're running at well below one megahertz, which is probably not what you want to do. So yeah, so you have to keep in mind that it's a really old chip and it's really slow. And so it's not gonna be working well with faster and more modern builds. Okay, so in this video, we've improved our display circuit by moving from a decimal display to an hexadecimal display using the MC14495 decoder. Now, as we said, there are a number of issues with this chip. First and foremost, it's not possible to purchase it anymore. So we have to find an alternative. And there are a number of ways we could go about that. We could replace the chip with a ROM. And I'm not going to do a video about that because I think Ben Eater already has one. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to programmable logic. And the next video is going to be about using an ATF16V8 to recreate the MC14495. So stay tuned for that next video. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or feedback about this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.